The very first time that I met her, which was here at a church service, her face, her countenance, her demeanor was completely, you could tell that she was depressed, there was this heaviness, and you could just see that she was distraught. Just last week, I saw her at the kids' zone, she was dropping off her baby, and I looked at her, and it's kind of like you're taken back because her countenance, I mean her face, literally was different. And I love that about Jesus because I could see Jesus through her. This, she was so happy and this, like, it's just giving me shivers as I'm saying this. I'm telling you guys, complete transformation. Complete transformation. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. So we'll give it to Rachel now. And Rachel, tell us, what was your life like before Christ? Well, before Christ, um, I'm a recovering addict. I've been a meth addict since I was 14 years old. I grew up in foster care. Um, I had no parents. Um, and um, it was hard. I had a blockage. I didn't care about anybody the way I wanted to. I didn't, didn't trust God. I had a block towards God the whole time because I blamed him for everything that I went through. And uh, for a long time. And then um, it was hard. It was, it was a pretty upbringing, hard life. It was. And it was, I always turned to drugs. I turned to drugs, I turned, I was smoking cigarettes and smoking weed and, and that was how I lived my life pretty much till I was 27, yeah. And what happened uh, when you saw, tell us, uh, how did you get to Hungry Generation? How, what happened there? Well, I was, my ex-boyfriend tried to run me over the car <laughs> and I was walking to a gas station at two o'clock in the morning and I ran into Sabrina, my mentor. And she said that, um, she looked at me and said, God says you need a friend. And she took me home that night. And ever since that night, she's been, we had struggles. She was, you know, she was pushing though. She didn't let go. She kept, she held on. And I was pushing away sometimes, but she just, she's been there. She's still there for me till this day, <laughs> you know. And um, I still have some struggles, but she's been there. And I, I you know, she's been amazing. And the, uh, about three weeks ago, Glenn <laughs> was over. <laughs> Let, before we go there, I, I do want to share, there's a video clip of your deliverance that took place. So we're just going to take a moment and then continue. So let's fix our eyes on the screen about the deliverance that took place here, and then we'll go from there. Okay, what have you done to her? You Lucifer, you Jessica, what have you done to her? Oh, she thought she would get rid of us. Uh-huh. We came back. Okay. <laughs> She needs us. What have you what done to her? Her career? Her relationship? Life. Uh-huh. She thought she could get rid of us. Okay. It didn't work out. Quite that well for her. No. <laughs> How did you enter her, you demon? How did you enter her? She, she thought she could get rid of us. We told Bob. She... She'd always need us. We'll always be a part of her life. Today you, is your last day. No, it's You're not. Going. But before that. No, it's not. How many powers? I'm not going anywhere. How many powers do you have, you demon? How many powers? Oh. How many powers? I, so many. I control her. I ruin her life for her. She can't have nothing. Okay, what about relationship? <laughs> Talk about relationships. <laughs> Those are the worst ones for her. We make it impossible for her to be happy in a relationship. We make it impossible for her that she find somebody that she cares. <sighs> okay. So when you go, what will happen to her relationships? <sighs> when you go, what will happen? Well, she'll ask us back. She can't. She can't. Jesus Christ will fill that void. In the name of Jesus, your time in this body has expired. Every single one of you must go in the name of Jesus. Come out! 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 Out in the name of Jesus. Come out! So... This was one of the moments where this was the process of your freedom and of your deliverance and the journey that you're going on. Uh, tell us, this, this happened, and what was the next step? How, how were you processing well, all of it? The next step was, I, um, I still felt that blockage after that. It wasn't until like three weeks ago, Glenn came over and did a deeper, it's called deeper spiritual healing. 
He says, you don't need a deliverance. He's like, you had that done already, but he needs to take to the next step. And he said, you need deeper spiritual healing. He sat there and took me back to where I, I grew up a pretty hard life since I was a baby, baby. And I was like, God wasn't there. I was a baby. How can an infant, how can you let an infant go through the things that I went through? You know, and he said, okay, now look, look at, look at what's, look around you. Look what's going on. I wasn't there. God was holding me in the corner and telling me everything's going to be all right. You know, and I was like, what? And a memory came to my mind that God was there for me when I was only two years old and I needed some, somebody the most. And, um, you know, and all of a sudden that wall got knocked down. That wall got knocked down. And ever since then, I can feel his spirit, his presence right here by me. And it's crazy because my skin shivers still <laughs> from three weeks ago. I can still feel my body burns, my skin tingles, and I feel amazing. And it's crazy because I never, and it's just, the barrier's gone. And I feel so good. And I can still feel his presence. And my body still tingles. I'm just, I'm filled. Come on, come on. Come on. We can see Jesus shining through you. I did. I mean, I can just, you can see your whole countenance has changed and God is just doing a mighty work through you. Tell us, after you receive that uh, second step of, you know, the spiritual healing, uh, uh, your healing of your heart, uh, tell us what cravings, all those things that, you know, you were battling with, what got stripped away from that? Well, I've been smoking cigarettes for about, almost about four, about six six years. How many? Um, about a pack every two days. And, well, I quit three weeks ago. I have not had a nicotine fit, no nicotine gum, no nicotine cigarette, solid quit. <laughs> I have no anxiety, no depression, no anger, nothing. It's all gone. And, you know, she was just telling me, she's like, you know, the cravings, especially when you're a recovering addict, uh, the cravings come out. She's like, I haven't felt an ounce of that, even the cigarettes. I mean, two packs within one, uh, or sorry, what was, two, a pack within two days. I mean, that's insane where you're going from that. Only Jesus, only Jesus can do that. Amen? Come on. Now, what would be your word of advice for those that maybe are struggling today or those that are watching on live stream and they're like, I want to take that step. I want that for myself. What would be your words of encouragement? Find yourself a mentor. Mm. Find yourself a mentor. And I tell you what, those mentors, please don't let go of them. Because you know what? Once they keep fighting, keep fighting with them. Keep keep pushing them. Keep pushing them to come here. It's Because it's like, you know, if it wasn't for Sabrina, I wouldn't be here standing here today. I wouldn't. For her, and she's still helping me from this day, for three years ago now. Come on. Yep. Amen. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.